Redditors. What started off as a small lie but then snowballed into, this is my life now? I was dating a girl and I met her parents. I was a freshman in college seeking my physics degree, when I met her dad, he asked me why in the world I would go into physics when it is a difficult field to get work in. Thinking on the spot I said, yeah, I've thought about that too, and I've decided to switch to mechanical engineering. Welp I'll be getting my mech engineering degree this May. Told a small lie to a girl I was texting that I love running, dunno how it sold, because I was fat. Started running the second after I sent that. Five years later, I went from 298 to 180. Not bad. Somebody thought I was Jewish, and I didn't want to correct them because I hate confrontation. So now everyone in the school thinks I'm Jewish, and my homeroom got me a Passover card signed by everyone. My brain told me it was time to stop, but I didn't want to ruin the thought of the gesture. Your senior yearbook quote should be, I'm not really Jewish. I became friends with one of the managers at Panera. One day as I was giving a cashier my order, he told her to give me the same discounts as they give to firemen, police, and paramedics I think. He just chose this discount as it was an easy button to push on the register. Well, this cashier really thought I was a fireman. I'm not. So for the next two years this cashier gave me the discount. Even if she wasn't serving me, she would go out of her way to tell the cashier that was helping me, he's a fireman, give him the discount. It snowballed into such an awkward situation that I didn't know how to get out of it. Luckily that cashier eventually transferred to another store, and I now happily pay full price. One day you're going to be just walking down the street, and there's going to be an apartment fire, and this girl is going to run up to you, oh thank god you're here, please save my baby. My freshman year of college, I was walking around campus when a very friendly looking girl waved at me. I'm awkward, so of course I waved back. The next week, the same thing. This began the weirdest saga of my life. For the next two years, we greeted each other as old friends every time we came across the other. She knew my name, somehow. I never could figure hers out, and it was way too late to ask. I just pretended I knew who she was and why she knew me. Finally, I joined the honors program and entered my classes for my thesis. Who should be in this class but mystery girl? I was horrified. I wouldn't be able to pass it off anymore. First day of class we are all sitting there chatting, and she greets me by name, again. I had finally learned her name from attendance, thank god. Someone asks, finally, oh, so do you two know each other? Where'd you meet? Silence. I stare at her. She stares at me. Finally she breaks down wailing. I don't know. I don't know, okay. We've just been waving at each other for two years, and it was too late to ask. She's standing in my wedding next spring as one of my bridesmaids and very best friends. Edit, I'm a chick, she's not 100% sure how she learned my name. Hi Ty, love you dude. I was homeless, sleeping under a bridge in Charlotte near the music factory. I needed a job, so I dressed as best I could, which wasn't very well. Walked into a bar on 7th and lied about my work experience. They gave me the job, I started working that day. They paid me cash after every shift. I worked there for 3 years, became the manager, and now I love cooking. Never cooked a day in my life up till that point. A lady, in her 50s, who was acting as the kitchen manager trained me. She knew I lied, but she also knew I was in trouble. I couldn't even cut a tomato. She saved my life. She didn't tell anyone, and kept training me even though sometimes I'd piss her off, but I always tried to do better. I got an apartment a month into the job, using another cook to call the apartment and let them know how much I get paid, cause they wanted that for some reason. I was getting paid $11 under the table, so nothing was on record, which is why he had to call. I worked as a line cook immediately. It was overwhelming. I'm not from the city, and the work was fast paced. I would study on my time off by watching YouTube and cooking at home. My mother was a super control freak, so one of the ways I would avoid home was after school extracurriculars. I got the date wrong on a math team meeting, 
so I lied to my mom about it while actually attending the debate team intro meeting. I probably didn't need to lie, but it was always safer to not disrupt her precious schedule. Eventually, debate became a regular activity for me to avoid home. In three years, I was a state semi-finalist, and in college, I coached the high school national champions and turned that into a free ride for a master's degree. I have one. A good friend of mine did not have an umbrella on a very rainy day. One of her co-workers offered her a lift home. One lift home turned into two, then three, until he was shuttling her to and from work every day for months. This co-worker is also a very good baker, he would make these lovely cakes and pastries, and offer them to her which she politely took, every day. Then one afternoon, on her way home, he stops and picks up his parents. He happily introduces her as his girlfriend. She was shocked by this title to say the least. They proceeded to invite her to a family gathering over the long weekend to meet everyone. His parents, they were so nice, she accepted because she didn't have the heart to embarrass the guy. She went to the gathering, met with other family members and he kept introducing her as his girlfriend. She never worked up the nerve to correct or stop him. Long story short, they are now married. I moved to a new city when I was in 6th grade, and on the same day I started, two other boys started and they both knew how to skateboard, so I lied and said I did too. Then for months I lied about being able to skateboard to them and other kids at the school, and I never came clean because I didn't want anyone to call me a poser. So I bought skater boy clothes, and a skateboard and learned how to skateboard because I lied about knowing how to skateboard. Still skating since then. I'm 27 now. An electrician came and priced up a job at our rental property. He greeted me with, Hi Ian. I've come to price some work up. I replied, Yeah, that's me. My name is not Ian. It's not even close to Ian. I was too British to correct him with his error, so I just went along with it. It's not the worst lie I've ever come out with. In my head I'm thinking, at worst the guy is just going to call me Ian again when he leaves. He was in my flat for a good 20 minutes, calling me Ian during conversations we had. Not once did I correct him, just stayed in character as Ian. Weeks went by, and he eventually came back to do the work at the flat. My missus and me had the day off, I had forgotten about the whole Ian thing until that day, so I explained to her that if she talked to me that day to call me Ian. It's just easier. This is one that doesn't bother me. I had a co-worker with memory issues or dementia, and he called me Kevin once in a while, not my name obviously. It made me laugh, and one of my co-workers started calling me Kevin and telling new employees that's my name. This was 3 years ago, and it is still going. At the same time I told my son who thought it was hilarious, and somehow it morphed into me calling him Kevin, and my cat too. So I would yell downstairs, Kevin, is Kevin down there? My son told his best friend, and they started calling each other Kevin. Now when I see my son's friend I call him Kevin. For this story to come full circle, my son and said friend came to my office, and I introduced them as my son Kevin and his friend Kevin. Also my sister now calls my son Kevin. Living in a college town, every year around spring graduation, there's one or two, I'm here to see my kid graduate but I haven't been able to locate them families. Usually kids that stopped going, pocketed their parents money, and or just gave up and couldn't handle telling the family. It ends sadly sometimes. That's a big lie slash deception to deal with and maintain. It almost always comes to a head. I'm from a small town, and was super worried slash anxious about how college would go. After move-in day, everyone on our floor had to go around saying our major slash what we wanted to do occupation-wise. I was fourth to go. The first three people say, doctor, lawyer, surgeon. I'm convinced at this point that everyone in college was way smarter than me and had their shit together. You're on Reddit, you get it. Anyway, I blank, blurt out economics as my major, then say, professor because it was the best thing I thought you could do with that. So now I'm in my second year of PhD program, because I just never found a good reason to change from my RA meeting as a freshman. Edit, yes, I found out later that like 80% of the incoming bio majors were pre-med, because it's all talk. 
If you are 18, don't make the mistake I did. You should be worried about doing well in college, but the freshmen who look like they are way ahead of you are either a. lying because they are scared to b. wearheads who don't think picking majors are worth worrying about. Not me, but my dad. We moved and he was convinced the postman's name was Jer, as in short for Jerry. He greeted him by it, nearly every day for about 10 years. We even gave him a Christmas card which he displayed down in the sorting office. Fast forward, and we have a temporary postman, my mom asking him after a few weeks, when is Jer coming back? This was met with stunned silence and a puzzled look, with a resounding, who is Jer? No one works in the locality by that name. Turns out, his name is Declan, and he was too nice to correct my dad for close to a decade. Back in high school, someone in my freshman English class thought he heard someone call me Lewis, so he started calling me Lewis. Not really a friend, just someone I spoke to on occasion. Now high school me thought he was just trying to be funny, and didn't care to correct him, and he continued to call me Lewis, and whenever I heard him call for me I responded. It wasn't until our last week of senior year that he stops me in his tracks and goes. Someone told me your name isn't Lewis. Is your name Lewis? No. I've been calling you Lewis for 4 years. I thought that was your name. In Vegas for a bachelor party. I was 21 or 22 at the time. Got wasted. Made a bet with a friend while we were out at the club. If you're wrong, you have to pretend to be British the rest of the night. I lost. I was British. Met a girl, who started talking to me because she overheard me saying some bullshit to my friends in a British accent. She thought that I was British. I went with it. I slept with said girl. Had to wake up hungover the next morning and continue to be British. She said that we should hang out again that night. Sure. Meet said girl, and she's brought all of her friends, who all think that I'm British. So I'm British again, but around more people. My friends are dying every time I talk. One tried to be Australian around the girl's friends, but was called out for being a fraud. My fraudulence continued to go unnoticed. Had to answer all kinds of questions about my life and childhood. I had never been to the UK. Fortunately, I was an English lit major, and also watched a 3 or 4 British movies. Mostly Monty Python. Thus, I was more or less an expert on all things British. I got tired of doing the accent. So I started saying deliberately incorrect things about England to see if someone would call me out, more fun than randomly admitting it. Turns out that 21 year old American women are too dumb to know a ducking thing about England, so they were incapable of pointing out my bullshit. I like to think that, to this day, 12 years later, there are girls out there who think that the British invented tea and only drink it on Wednesdays that Cromwell was a benevolent leader who gave out free pheasant to the impoverished Irish, that James Bond was written by an Indian guy, and that the only reason that Brits are known to dress nicely is because it's illegal to not wear a tie on weekdays. The accent took over my mind so completely that, when a guy in line at that restroom said something to me, in a very clearly English accent, I instinctively responded in an English accent. He got excited. I realized what I had done, but just went with it. He introduced me to his friends, mates. They mentioned that they couldn't pinpoint where I was from. I told them my mom was American and I lived half my life in Maine, BS, and that's why I have a strange accent. They went with it. Brought the Brits back to our group. So now I had British homies. My friends couldn't believe it. I've entered British level 5000. So many level ups in so short a time. I admitted to her the next day that I wasn't British. She didn't believe me, and refused to accept that I was American. So duck it, I was British for another half a day. Thanks Maggie, for the good time, and for believing in me. That's when I realized that I really could be anything that I wanted to be. Once my boyfriend's mom asked me if I like their bathroom soap. It's lavender, I don't like lavender. But I decided to tell her, I love it. It smells so good. Now I have an endless supply, she buys me some all the time. It's too sweet to tell her the truth, so I just keep it to myself and use the mediocre smelling soap. Oh well, this is how I live now. 
When I was 14 years old, I played with a group of other kids on stage during the 2008 Hawaii International Ukulele Festival. Jack Johnson was performing, and we were behind him strumming along. Hundreds of us. This story has turned so thoroughly into, I played on stage side by side with him just the two of us, that I can't correct people anymore, and just shamefully accept the O's and R's when it gets retold. People picked on my brother in high school for getting jumped by some wannabe blood thugs in the bathroom. Popular thugs, if you can believe it. It was relentless. His confidence and any friendships were crushed, cause, you know, people can't be seen with the loser. One day I was confronted by said thugs, basically talking shit about my brother, and in my infinite wisdom, I said, I could box, so they better back off. Something to that effect. Looking back, I cringe, but you do what you have to. Needless to say, they did not back off. Somehow, I landed a punch on one of the kids that dislocated his jaw. Like, flapping around like a mouthpiece hanging from a football helmet. I became the kid who could box but never wanted to fight, which I guess gave me credibility. I don't really know. Everyone and their hyena came to me asking where they could learn said boxing skills, how I'd learned by 16, all that crap. I'd wanted to just come out and say I had been lucky, but I didn't want anyone to give my brother shit again. So the lie stayed. Luckily, no one ever picked on my brother afterwards, and I did eventually learn some boxing fundamentals but most because I felt like I was living a lie. Which I was. As a man, I have not had to keep up the facade. I was having a rough time commuting too far for work for a few months. Decided to quit to find something closer to home, but told everyone I had been approved to work from home. When I went to give my two weeks, my manager asked, I know the driving has been killing you, how would you feel about working from home? Work laptop to my left and watching great British master class as I type, been working at home since then. Yeah right say I'm pretty good with Excel. No. No I wasn't. And now I'm an analyst at a Fortune 400 company. When I was little, my grandma would make me these horrible frozen chicken tenders filled with cheese. They were just god awful. Because I am a good grandson, I told her that I loved them. From then on. Every time that I visited her, she would cook me those abominations. Even when I was in graduate school, I would go visit her, and for one meal, I would have to slide those gross things down my gullet. Every time I would say, thanks. I love them. The things we do for love. I was looking for a job, and I didn't want to be a fast food manager anymore, so I fluffed out my resume with computer skills I didn't have. I was contacted by a recruiter who asked me some questions to gauge my abilities, and I straight googled the answers as he was asking them. When I went to the interview, the boss had all of these circuit boards sitting all over his desk. I recognized them as Raspberry Pis from Reddit. So I asked what he was using them for. The rest of the interview was just this guy bragging about all of these projects he had going on. He might as well have been speaking Greek. I just feigned interest and said wow a lot. I'm hired. Who knows how this shit happened, but I have literally googled every problem I have been given. Day 543, they still think I know what I'm doing. I'm making 1.5 times what I was making as a manager. I have a GED for Christ's sakes. I told my parents I bought a duck when I was 20 to tease them. I found a picture online of one and sent it to them. Sadly, they believed me. They got overly excited about their grand duck and told my whole family. I ended up buying a duck. My uncle's name is Ernie, and he owns a restaurant, and likes to talk to guests when they arrive and leave. One of the patrons that eats there a lot, confused his name with Bert, a la Bert and Ernie. Being the pleasant and polite Asian dude he is, he didn't have the heart to correct him. Now whenever this one customer comes, the staff and my aunt, the manager, has to call him Bert. He is my Uncle Bert now. Wasn't a drinker in high school, so to shut down peer pressure I told them I was born with half a liver, and drinking anything could make me very sick or kill me. The lie just became natural and followed me to college. Was out with some friends playing pool and decided to have a beer. When I came back, a buddy slapped it out of my hand thinking I was suicidal. 
Then the explanations began. I didn't want to go to dinner with the gang from work, including my boss, so I told them I was having dinner with my wife and her parents. I lied. I get home, wife wants to go out to dinner. So, we head to the restaurant, and just as we're getting near the door, I see the work gang with my loudmouth boss all piling out of their cars. What are odds of us picking the same restaurant? Shit. Busted. There was an old couple walking into the restaurant in front of us. I held the door for them, and insisted they join us for dinner. They were quite perplexed, but accepted my offer of a free dinner. It was the most uncomfortable dinner ever. They had no clue who we were, none of us had any shared interests, they rushed through dinner, thanked us, and got the hell away from what I'm sure they thought were a couple of weirdos. I know this wouldn't have come to you in the heat of the moment, but for the future just say your in-laws cancelled, and you decided to turn it into a date night as you already had a table booked. My husband's best friend has a 6 year old daughter that I see often. When she was almost 3, she babbled something to me, I think it was, my friend's here. And my husband interpreted it as, my friend Steve. And started calling me Steve in front of her. Now her whole family call me Steve when she's around, and she still believes that's my name. For clarity, I'm a female and my name isn't anything close to Steve, 